Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by, thanks for listening to us. Um, before we start, I want to, to ask how many of you have been involved with Molecule before? Did something with it? Okay, so there is a bunch of people. Okay. It means the project, not Molecule. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with our talk. Well, actually let's start with a trivia question. Who knows what that is? Oh wow, obviously it's a molecule. <laughs> Who knows what kind of molecule that is? Alcohol. Exactly, it's alcohol, to be more precise. It's <laughs> kind of alcohol. It's ethanol. So it's drinkable alcohol. Well, not drinkable, it's also enjoyable alcohol. <laughs> what does this have to do with anything we're talking about? Um, well, I'm gonna have to tell you to wait a bit longer to figure that out. For now, I wanted to introduce the people that are standing here in front and talking to you. This is Matthias. Hi. Matthias is actually a physicist by training. That's might be, maybe why we come up with such ideas for talks. Uh, besides that, he's also a software engineer, senior software engineer at Ethics. And he is uh, dealing with things as foreman, with pulp. He's giving right after this uh, talk about pulp and Ansible, and obviously Ansible also. And I don't know uh, how many of you heard the talk from Evgen yesterday about the form and Ansible modules. That's also something where Matthias is very active. And Matthias is also to be found online, if you want to find him. Oh, thank you for the introduction. So, there's, wrong, wrong, wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> there's also Bernhard Hoppenmüller standing here. And he's also a physicist, by incident. <laughs> but he's not a software developer, he's a senior IT consultant. He does a lot with Ansible. He was also involved in creating what we now know as the common Ansible modules. He works with Kafka and, wait for it, by demand of certain customers, he does DevOps. <laughs> also, he can be found on GitHub and other online media. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many physicists or chemists do we have here? <laughs> there are some. <laughs> um, yeah. What is molecule? Molecule is a testing framework. Why is it called molecule? Well, we thought maybe it has to do with chemi chemical things. So. In the industry, you might want to produce a chemical substance, a specific one. So the question is, when I build my chemical plant, does it work as specified? And in Ansible, it might be just be the same. You have a role and you do one. You want to know, does my Ansible role create a system that works as specified? If you have that, you want to know, can I optimize that? Can I create the same substance with less time or less energy involved? And in Ansible, yeah, can I refactor my role to be maybe more readable, less code, anything, without changing the behavior? And maybe, can I reuse some of it with site reconfiguration or parameterization? to do another thing without breaking the first thing. So, back to the topic. What has a molecule to do with an Ansible role? Well, an Ansible role consists of several parts, just like a molecule consists of several atoms. So, in the molecule we typically find templates, handlers, default values or variables, files that can be copied somewhere and probably the most important thing in the middle are the tasks that handle all the other parts. So the question could be if I see Ansible then all those modules that are used as tasks are already tested, why should I test the role? So as we said the role consists of several ingredients that are all kind of stuck together. 
Um, a molecule is more than just a bunch of atoms, and that so a role is more than just a bunch of modules. The order in those atoms really matters if you look at that. And you count all the oxygen and all the hydrogen and all the carbon atoms, they are the same but they are completely different molecules here. On the one side, I think it is called detoxy ethan, and the other one should be propane. Really, completely different substances. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, even if they are not the same uh, number of atoms involved, they can be quite similar. Those are two alcohols, but one is a very enjoyable one, as we already stated, and the other one is quite nasty one. Also, they do have similar um, effects on the human body, just there are side effects, and you probably don't want them. <coughs> Yeah, so the starting point to show you the molecule framework here is a role. It's just a role as any role. Actually, in this case, it's a role we are actively <coughs> using in uh, the Ansible trainings we're giving for our customers. And what the thing does is, as the name states kind of already, it spins up an Nginx web server and displays a bunch of information about the system that the server is running on, right? Like Matthias said already, such a role has certain parts. In our case, we have some default values. We have some files. In our case, that's a CSS style sheet we want to use for a specific visualization. We have a handler. We have the tasks file, obviously. And we have a template file that will be actually the index page we want to be rendered later on. And last but not least, we have a VARS file as well here. So we have, if we have such a role, and we want to now start going into the molecule world, the first thing we want to do is actually spin up some virtual environment that we want to use. In this case, we are using uh, Python 3.6. Actually, molecule also runs with uh, Python 2 still. So take whatever you like in this case. And the next thing would be really to install a molecule. Once you have that, the important thing is the last bit here, molecule init scenario, right? And if I don't give it a specific name that I'm not doing here, it will just create a default scenario. And then my file tree looks after it like this. So in dotted here indicated, we see the stuff we already had before. Additionally, now we have a YAML lint file and we have a molecule folder. that uh, contains here a default directory that's containing the default scenario we want to test on. Don't worry so much about the content of this directory for now. We will come to that later, step by step. However, if you um, want to get started, the first thing you want to look at is the molecule YAML file. That's kind of the configuration file that defines all the things you want to do later on. And if I do that for a default scenario, I will end up with one thing that's here, this driver. So the default driver that we are using for molecule testing is Docker. The thing I uh, added here is the platforms. Yeah, that's basically the instances, the architectures we want this to run on. In this case, I just have to define a name and the corresponding Docker image I want to use. In this case, it's just some upstream CentOS 7 and a default Debian 10. Another command that I can use is the molecule matrix command. Um, in this case, I want to see the test matrix, right? I can run molecule test later on. And when I run molecule matrix, if I want to for a specific scenario, in this case, I don't need it, um, I want to see what a test run would really do. And I see that the default test run would do all those things. It would lint, it would check dependencies, it would do something destroying, creating, preparing, converging, item potents, verify, and destroy. And now we want to go step by step through those points and explain you what they will do. So, first things first, the linting. How do I induce the linting? 
I'm adding here in my molecule file just a linting and uh, telling it which linter to use. In this case, I want a YAML lint. Just default, standard YAML lint, as all of you probably know. Okay, I think we heard a lot already uh, this uh, config management camp and the ones before about YAML syntax, so I will not join in on the YAML bashing now. But um, some YAML files are, other, uh, are different than other YAML files. In this case, we see a YAML file that has a bunch of variables. And the thing that might stand out here is that, first of all, we have a different leveling here on the indentation. Second of all, we don't have a header, right, those three dashes. Uh, also, we have here a list with, well, I don't know if it's uh, countries or um, Boolean values. And we have two Boolean values. Um, I don't know about you and your company. In our company, we have rather strict YAML rules. So we actually want to fail this. We don't want that our YAML linting is actually going ahead with this, which it would do if you don't do anything by yourself. So what we really want to have is something like that. Yeah, We want a strict two spaces indentation level. We always want the document header. And we only want small written false and true as Boolean values, nothing else. How can we implement this here in our molecule framework or actually in any YAML linting framework? Well, the thing we need to do is edit the .yaml lint that my uh, molecule installed me by itself. And I can uh, extend here some rules. For example, in my case, I added the enabling for a document start. So every YAML file has to start with three dashes. Besides that, I want a strict two-space indentation that is consistent. That's the uh, second line here. <coughs> and I want to enable the true theme, which means that only false and true small written will be Boolean values. And last but not least, there are some YAML files I actually do not want to be linted, right? Because they will always fail or annoy me or whatever. In this case, for example, we had a GitLab file. We are, use, uh, we are heavy users of the GitLab CI CD and keeping that file according to um, <coughs> proper YAML linting is not always easy. So in this case, we just ignore it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> After I have done that, the linting step is kind of checked for now. So let's come back later to it when we actually run it. The second step is the dependencies, right? Basically, any role probably has some kind of dependencies, not necessarily, but a lot of them at least. How do I implement dependencies in this case? The standard dependency managing tool is the Galaxy I can use in Molecule. So how do I implement that here? I'm just adding another YAML um, key with the name dependency, and it has the value name, and the name here points to a galaxy. Uh, what do I need to do then? I need to add a requirement file within my um, uh, scenario, right? And I have to, like I do in any uh, galaxy requirement file, I have to specify where I want my roles from. Um, yeah, in this case, I just wrote a wildcard on Gearling Guy. I'm actually not sure if this works. I don't think it works, but yeah, just to, to point out that you could use any, any role from Gearling Guy in this case. Um, how do I get the dependencies, actually? Well, when I run a molecule dependency, the thing that will happen is that it will start and download the dependencies to my computer. In this case, it's the NTP role, actually. Uh, install it there, and then I can use it later on in my molecule testing framework. Um, there are alternatives. If I don't like Galaxy, I could either actually use a simple shell, like it's on the bottom here, though I'm not sure if curl pipe bash is really a good idea, so take care please. Or I could use Gilt. I don't know if anybody of you ever heard of Gilt. There are. Fantastic. Great, it's fantastic, right? So Gilt is, uh, actually stands for a Git layering tool. What does it do? Uh, it does not only allow you to pull some roles from somewhere, but you can also specify how your final uh, file tree should really look like. Right? We have here a big um, repository. So there's a follow-up question. I'm, I'm sorry about this, but where did that slide come from? I'm, I'm referring to the URL. The URL? <laughs> That's from the Gilt uh, documentation. OK, OK, sorry. <laughs> I have to go on. <laughs> so this is actually straight copied from the Gilt documentation, yeah. 
Um, there is a repository here specified with a bunch of roles, and I want from the master branch of those um, uh, one specific subdirectory, and I want it to be in my uh, dear directory within the roles under the sub um, folder blue box group dot logging. It's a nice alternative. Upon how to use those dependencies, really, uh, I beg for some patience. We will come later to that. So, back to the matrix. We already talked about linting and dependency. And now come some steps that are actually concerning a machine that we try to roll on. So, we need to first clean up the place, destroy all the old instances then create new instances, prepare them, and then there's the converge step, which might be the most central part of the testing here. Um, uh, those uh, steps are in, usually called by an Ansible provisioner, but yeah, first, destroys all the old Docker containers in that case, then creates new Docker containers according to the Docker file that is in the um, scenario directory. And then you can insert a prepare playbook, which might be needed if you need to install packages first, put some files there that are not really part of the role itself. And then you call the actual playbook, which is called the converge step. I don't know exactly why. I think it's because all of this is going to be uh, idempotent. Um, yeah, so um, with the matrix command again, you can look at what would happen if I called molecule create. And the test matrix says, well, oh, I need the dependencies first, and then I create the machine, and then I do the prepare step. <coughs> In creating, I already said, we create Docker containers because we are using the Docker provider by default. And so there is a Docker file template, actually, which is uh, written in Jinja 2. Um, the standard default template uses just one variable, which is the image that is to be used in the first line of the Docker file. Um, then, in our case, we um, saw that for testing the role, we would need some way to access a web server because the role installs a web server and so it's a very common idea to, to check whether a certain URL really acts as a web server in the end. But installing curl is not really part of the role itself because it should only install the web server and not the tools to access it. And so that's a perfect match for the prepare role, uh, which is just a playbook as we all know it. Um, so we are done here. Um, there's not only the Docker provider, but with Molecule itself, Docker and Vagrant are bundled, which means there are small playbooks for create, destroy, prepare that can usually just be used unmodified. Now, the converge step is really running a playbook containing the role that we are going to test. To put our test instances in a converged, configured, installed state. So, in that, if, you, if you use the molecule matrix command again to look what converge does, it does basically the same as create, but it goes the step further and <coughs> runs the role runs the converge step. And uh, our molecule init 
command already prepared the playbook for this, which just includes the role, obviously. This slide is going to say that I can customize, create, and prepare, and probably will destroy stuff. But we don't need if we use the uh, playbooks from the Docker provider because they have common names, they are bundled, they are just looked up inside the molecule tree. Yeah. So we have now seen that. All, all of those steps, lint to dependency, destroy the old machines, create new ones, prepare them, converge them to the state the role is uh, supposed to be putting the machine, and now is this uh, Eden Potence. What is the Eden Potence? Um, Eden Potence means Eden Potence? I don't know. <laughs> it means if you do the same thing twice, the result should be the same as after the first run. In Ansible, this means if you run the same tasks a second time, they report that they didn't change anything. So, what, what does it do? It reruns the Converge playbook. And it checks whether anything reports a change. But be careful. This step might fail more often than you think, and this is not always a sign that the role is wrong. For example, <coughs> um, yeah, if it if you just cannot go around it, you can skip it because you can specify what the test sequence is going to be, and you can just skip the intense part. But let's make an example. If you are on a Debian-based machine and you want to install packages, you first need to update the list of available packages, which technically is a change to the box, but it's not really a change to the state you are interested. So the Ansible command for apt to update your cache will report a change here always, but your role doesn't isn't really interested in that change. So sometimes you can get around that by just specifying that the task didn't change anything. So sometimes you can rescue the item the item tense test. Um, so. Now uh, the fact that the role itself ran without complaining doesn't mean that it did the right thing. So it's uh, and we are talking about testing, so we should test that if we wanted to install a web server, that web server is really there, and maybe that the web page it's, it's uh, serving are the right ones, or at the right addresses. And <coughs> therefore we have a verify step, and there are Again, different providers, one of which is Test Infra. I think we have heard in the last talk of Test Infra already. <coughs> um, since Test Infra is written in Python, it is not limited with YAML, but in this case with Flake. And we have written up here an example for such a test, <coughs> and I will just try to walk you through. It's a usual Python program, so you can import libraries you need for the test. You probably will uh, import something from test infra to access the hosts, which are then in the middle block, where you use the Ansible runner to get the, to get objects representing the hosts and their state and then you can uh, write any function that is 
prefixed by test underscore, which will, then will be interpreted as a test by PyTest. And for example, here we just look whether a package called nginx is installed, which is of course <coughs> one of the tasks in our role that we install nginx. There's another alternative. If you don't want to write Python tests, you can say, I want a usual Ansible playbook to be run <coughs> as a test. I don't know, or I haven't seen how you can have both. So it's either one or the other. And, well, if you do Ansible, an Ansible playbook, you should link it with Ansible and not flip. Okay, so now we have basically a complete matrix that we can use to uh, run a test. So how do we actually now uh, do such a test, right? What are the single steps we need to do here? So um, in principle, we can, by using the molecule command and the name of the scenario, uh, trigger each step independently, right? We can do a molecule lint to run only the linting. We can do a molecule create to only create my infrastructure. I can do a molecule list to see if there is maybe leftovers. I can also run a um, converge to only run the row. Um, it comes actually very handy to do those <coughs> steps singly after each other. Um, if I use, want to use this molecule login, what does molecule login do? Well, actually, it offers me to stop and jump right on the box I created. In this case, it uh, connects me to the uh, Docker um, container I created. I can log in. I can check <coughs> myself manually if actually what I intended to be there is actually going on there, right? Um, I can then also run the verify steps only. I can change something in my test. I can rerun the converge then, re-log in, check it, all those things. And when I'm finally satisfied with everything, I can just do a molecule destroy and get rid of all that. If I run molecule test, it will run basically all of those steps, unless, as we showed before, I manually intervene and change the matrix that I want to use. I can also do that in the molecule config file. And um, a handy little thing that comes in is I can also do a molecule test, dash dash destroy never, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious what it does. It just does not destroy my infrastructure. So I don't need to wait again to <coughs> pull my, I don't know how big, Docker file and rerun the container or whatever I'm doing. Um, we will also come to that later again, where that might come in handy. Um, so now I have a scenario <coughs> that is checking some things to be found as they are. That's not really a fully satisfying test yet, right? Um, this is the result if I run my role, right? As I told you, it's a um, basic static web page that shows some kind of uh, information about the host this web server is running on. Um, this is very limited information. So how about I want to see more information, right? For example, uh, <coughs> if I wanted to see additionally, uh, it's a bit small maybe, but the block here on the right is a new block, and that block is only a block that contains all the environment variables that are defined for my host. So it's the role running in a different scenario, I would say, right? Um, doing this within a playbook is rather easy. Um, I'm just using a template file as I do here, right? And there is uh, in the um, Jinja template an if switch that says, if the variable full info is set to some true value, I'm also including some new block that contains whatever other information. So uh, on the side of Ansible, that is rather easily done. The question is now, how do I switch that flip within my molecule testing? So as we stated, um, it has an if switch, so we do actually support an option to include more sensitive information, which gives us uh, two different results, and those two different results 
can be tested. So in Molecule, we can add another scenario. Um, now we need to specify the name because the default scenario is already taken. We do this by calling the same command as before, molecule in its scenario minus s and now full, that's the name of the new scenario. And it will create just about the same subdirectory in the molecule folder, now with the name full. And it will populate it with yeah, the same Docker file, template, the same molecule and playbook. So I need to um, customize that now. But I don't want to. I already have done that, <laughs> and I'm lazy. And I don't want to remember I have five different scenarios, and if anything changes, I need to do the changes five times. <coughs> so the question is, what can I reuse there? And in our case, the scenarios aren't really quite different. The only difference is I need to inject a variable, therefore, I am going to link the molecule YAML, the Docker file template, and the prepare step to the new directory, so they are reused. And I'm taking a copy of the old playbook and just adding a vars stanza there, where I say full info is now true. So I can, so, so this role run runs with one non-default option. Also, I want to, the verify step in this scenario to be specific. But yeah, still there are probably some common tests. And as test is a directory and we can just drop a lot of files there, we can split our tests into a common part of tests and well, the, uh, the specific part. In this part, the specific is the content of the web page. And so again, I'm just linking the test common tests to the test directory of the new scenario. And I'm copying the old content specific part into a new file. And again, with test infra, I can now uh, write a test that uses curl as we installed in the prepare step to fetch the web page and assert that we do have certain strings in the result that we only expect if we do full info. And now, how do I run the scenario? I can just do a molecule test with minus s and then the name of the scenario. Then it runs the molecule test for that one scenario. And remember, it's the whole matrix from destroying the old boxes, creating new boxes, preparing them, converging, idempotencing them, and after all, deleting them. Now, if I want to, if I, if I change something in my role and I want to verify that it's still working in all scenarios, I should test all scenarios and we can do that with one command, which is like molecule test all. And if you're brave enough, you can do that in parallel. <coughs> parallel step, obviously. <coughs> and this is pretty much the command you want to use in your CI, I believe. Yeah, so um, as we heard uh, today also, um, Docker might not be the most popular tool around. Um, there are new tools and uh, also not all your infrastructure really runs on Docker, right? So you want to maybe do some more realistic testing, I guess. Um, it all comes in the end to the question, can I use different drivers than Docker? Well, as we teased, yes, you can. You can, for example, use Vagrant, which is already bundled as well, so I don't need to take care of preparing um, any of the setup <coughs> playbooks. But there are also other drivers supported. For example, is Hetzner Cloud uh, among them. That's just uh, some public cloud provider that's rather known in Germany. 
uh, probably not so much outside Germany, but uh, the same equally goes for uh, Amazon, for Azure, uh, etc. How do I do that? Well, I need to install some additional uh, package that really takes care of the driver. Um, and all I need to do beyond that is say molecule scenario init, give it a name, in my case I'm calling it heads the default, and then specify the driver name. In my case, heads the cloud. Or I could use it EC2 or whatever driver I want to use. What it does is pretty much create the whole same thing again, right? I'm getting a directory with the name of the scenario I chose. And in this case, I will see that there are actually create, destroy, and prepare playbooks inside. Why is that? Well, as I said, they are not shipped and bundled uh, for those drivers within Molecule. So Molecule is creating them, auto-creating them for me. So they are just exactly doing what I need here. When I specify now, as I did, a CentOS 7 <coughs> and a um, Debian 10 box, all I need to do is in the, uh, in the uh, Molecule file, not say um, that I want um, CentOS dash seven, but for uh, CentOS uh, colon seven, but for example CentOS dash seven, because that's the name the provider is using to spin up a, um, a machine with that operating system. The same, uh, the rest of it goes pretty much very parallel to what we said before. Um, also, the stuff about reusing code, reusing tests, um, <coughs> very similar. Everything. Um, we don't have it yet, but we will, when we upload the slides, put in a link uh, to a GitHub repo where we actually uploaded um, this role. And then you can also check it out for yourself where we implemented this um, cloud provider support. Yeah, as I said, um, you have to do some changes then in your, uh, in your molecule file. Right in this case, I'm using a different driver. It's called uh, Hetzer Cloud. And um, what else do I need to specify? Well, I need to say what kind of a server I want. In this case, it's a, X, a CX11 server type, whatever that is. Um, what I'm doing here is oh, some neat uh, YAML, YAML anchoring still. Um, we are lazy, as we stated, so we don't want to repeat ourselves. And with this um, um, and, and the star syntax in YAML, you can actually uh, reuse YAML blocks you uh, defined before in other places. If you're interested about that, just Google for YAML anchoring. It's pretty neat, a pretty neat trick. And <coughs> what we do then in the platforms, we just use this platform base we defined before, and just say, in this case, it should use the CentOS 7 or the Debian 10 image for the online provider. Yeah. As always, there is more. Um, we already said those are just uh, examples of drivers. You can uh, test boxes on digital oceans. You can use Podman, Vagrant, LXC containers, or EC2. What? Yeah, a lot more. And we already thought about it might be pretty easy to implement a new one because you just need the create, destroy, and yeah, yeah actually create and destroy playbooks. Um, it's testing a uh, role, so test driven development <coughs> is always a thing. You can just write the tests first and then see that the role doesn't do what you like and then repair the role to make it do that. Um, uh, beyond that, um, a lot of roles that you write will actually probably need something as system D. Um, because there are services that are running. And if you want to stick with the um, uh, default, that's always a bit tricky, right, to get system B uh, properly running in Docker. There is actually examples in the documentation how to do it, and they do work, so we, we tested them. Um, besides that, there is also some more documentation how you can implement this very easily in your CI/CD workflow, or to do also things like using Tox. I don't know who, you, uh, who knows about Tox, but Pretty much what it does, it uh, allows you to test that your role is not only working in the CentOS 7 and Debian 10 with a Python 3, but also beyond that in a Python 2 version. So you can use different uh, Python versions to build that up. Yeah. And uh, upon that, uh, I just 
want to lose a few words about uh, our company that we're working on. We are uh, Ethics. Uh, as Matthias said, we are doing DevOps. <laughs> but we're also doing lots of different other things that uh, fit in in this yeah, well, modern world, I guess. And with that, I think we want to close. And we're happy for your questions. Thank you very much. Team, we, we use a monorepo, and um, last time I tried using Molecule with that, it didn't really um, take that into consideration, I guess. Do you have any experience doing that? Um, no, actually not experience, but when did you try that? Oh, it's a year ago. Okay, because the documentation is very, let's say, agile, even though I don't <laughs> like this word. But uh, there is also in documentation actually a snippet how to use it in a monorepo, uh, explicitly stated. So maybe so, check yeah, that out. Yes, yeah, sure. And, and another question in the same case, I guess. Um, so, for example, for lint settings, uh, it's a bit. Um, or, or, all, all projects with that some point in time build a tool to manage all the small files inside each repo, which is something I'm trying to avoid with a monorepo. Mm -hmm. So uh, how can we solve that for like for lint settings and things that are you want to be the same in every row in that. Um so you want to reuse your yes. your testing infrastructure I, I would or say in the basic setup of a the basic setup um, <laughs> So what would ends up what would ends up happening is that I have hundred and fifty different roles and all of them need a small update to one file. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess you could also try and work with linking to I don't know <laughs> that, that would work probably. Um, I don't know uh, other ideas. Uh, maybe actually the the the, the pulp repository. Uh, I was thinking about an overriding and, and reading configuration from a different source first and then something. I don't know. I was just. I'm just thinking. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, can you redefine the, the yeah. drivers? Or like the init will need to do this for you, right? So you need to kind of custom. Probably you could customize that and make sure that this is actually doing what you're doing. Uh, I'm not sure. I have to be honest. That, the, uh, but it would be actually very handy. I agree. Yeah. Um, but to that point, uh, the init templates the playbooks for create and destroy for you. Um, you can customize them. Yes. And I think as for YAMLint, you can also probably use a system-wide YAMLint config file, I'm pretty sure, so that would help in that case. Any more questions? Please. How would you compare Monaco with this kitchen? <laughs> um, fair point. Uh, to be honest, um, I don't know by heart because I never used Test Kitchen before. Maybe somebody knows, somebody well, can help well, Test Kitchen is a more generic tool and this is more specific for Ansible. I, okay. I, I don't see a way of like, testing something else on Ansible. Yeah. I mean, you have to say, for example, that this is using an Ansible driver is very much, for example, nailing it down right on the, on the Ansible universe. Um, so, yeah. There is already a potency check in this kitchen. You should uh, create a clutch for that. <coughs> and it was a key point for us for migrating from this kitchen to molecule. Mm -hmm. Except uh, time. OK, yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, so, so a kind of objective when you said that uh, like, uh, you have all the stages, and item, the, what's the one before item potency? Converge. Converge is the most important one. I, I'm, I'm, I'm disagreeing. It's the next one that's most important. <laughs> Wait, but just uh, one thing before everybody leaves. Uh, Toshi asked us to uh, announce publicly that there will be waffles now downstairs. Thank you. Thank you.